Christine, thank you so much for allocating time. I've seen your biography, it is stunning. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. I'm sure it's gonna inspire many women or men or so perhaps, who knows? <laughs> So uh, thank you. Um, Lighton is a project that aims to inspire, to coach, uh, to develop women through the stories of exceptional uh, people like you, exceptional background, exceptional um, uh, career path, uh, exceptional ideas, ambitions, missions, messages, whatever. And so thank you for uh, allocating the time today again. Um, just a few words about myself first, and then I will let you just present yourself, the best version of yourself. So I'm the general manager of Trade & Corp. Uh, we are domicile in the French Chamber of Commerce in Bangkok. We are a team of six people all over the globe, so managing different areas of the globe, supporting companies actually uh, through their processes of certifications, but also through regulatory strategies. Uh, on another side, we advise, but we also coach. I'm also a certified coach. I'm also the author of the book, uh, the collaborative book, Women Who Inspire, which is just right here. It's already published. Another one in on, is on the way, but for the moment, that's the one. Uh, so that's basically us. And uh, now I will just leave you explain first who you are, and then we'll go with the flow with your objectives in life, ambitions. Perfect, perfect. So thank you very much for the words. Thank you very much for thinking of me uh, uh, to, to collaborate, because it's true that it's a very, very interesting project. So uh, I, I, I just hope I can live up to the expectations and uh, that I can, you know, my testimony can, can inspire or at least can help someone. So who am I? So I'm Ines, Ines Caldera, CEO of L'Oreal Thailand, Myanmar, Laos and Cambodia. I have dedicated uh, 20 years uh, to beauty and worked 20 years at L'Oreal. So it's, it has been a fantastic journey. Thailand is my fourth time ab abroad, and I landed in Bangkok at the end of 2018. I'm 42 years old. I'm a Portuguese national. I'm married. I have a son. So, um, you know, and I have a sister. So I have a, you know, I'm a very normal person. Let's put it this way. <laughs> okay. And what do you want to put line, light on uh, Ines today? What is it that is important for you to put light on? I, I'm, it's a very good question. And I think uh, there are, you know, two uh, groundbreaking programs that I'm very proud of and that we have launched here with the Thai teams. The first one was the digital revolution uh, that started uh, somewhere in 2017, 2018, but um, was, you know, gained a, a very uh, big momentum lately. So we do believe at L'Oreal that technology is a great enabler of, of beauty experiences. And we have radically changed the way we approach consumers. So we are now able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with our consumers. We can offer them digital beauty services without them leaving their houses. We serve them in various e-com uh, platforms and channels, and um, we create uh, real brands of love. So I, I, I really think, you know, if I were to, to look back uh, into the last three years of my mandate, that would be definitely one of the things I would like to put light on. The second thing, which is probably a long-term project, is this sustainability imperative. Um, so uh, this year, L'Oreal Thailand achieved carbon neutrality, which was four years ahead of our own uh, target. So we are very, very proud of that. We have transformed our supply chain. We are pioneering the gr green uh, packages with the, the e-com platforms uh, to make sure you know, we are creating a business that is uh, sustainable. We have made donations of more than 20 million euros in the last two years who have been, uh, you know, unprecedented in our uh, history and, of course, uh, are, are an answer 
to the COVID situation that the country has, has gone through. And last year, we did celebrate our 20 years in the country. So we were very, very proud. You know, the circumstances were not necessarily the ones we were hoping for, but uh, we were able to do the best uh, with, with the conditions we had. It sounds impressive to me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey. So what are you doing right now? What are you doing and what are your main roadblocks, if I may, may say, in your current activity? So the dream is really to become the number one beauty tech uh, company here in Thailand, which is closely related with what I just uh, told you about this di digital revolution, etc. The, the number one difficulty uh, at the moment is talent shortage. Uh, the digital economy everywhere in the world, but here in Thailand, has grown much faster than the market is able and the universities are able to produce talent, train them and keep up with the new skills that are needed every day. So to give you a, a very concrete example, uh, in e-commerce, we have done in four months what we had achieved in the previous four years. So it gives you an idea of the scale and the speed of what happened uh, with COVID. Uh, so the need for data analysts, data architects, e-commerce supply chain uh, skills, social managers, e-com financial controllers were almost non-existent before. So there are others, of course, uh, but I would say that at the moment, uh, all countries are fighting for talent. And, and this is going to be very interesting to follow uh, because, of course, you know, the leaders of the future are the ones going to win the talent uh, battle. But, but, you know, I'm very optimistic. I'm very positive. And you asked about the roadblocks, but, you know, there are many things that carry us uh, as well. We benefit greatly from the digital uh, readiness of the ties. We have great partners who take the initiative, uh, like Facebook, Google, just to mention a few. And we have customers and, uh, you know, our clients who, who have entered these uncharted waters with the same pioneering spirit as us. So uh, all the um, brick and mortar clients are also, you know, uh, embracing these adventures. So I would say that... Uh, is a much, a much more favorable um, scenario or conditions that, than the roadblocks. Mm -mm. Perhaps Thailand was ready for e-commerce? Um, I think the consumer was more ready than the ecosystem. But what was remarkable was to see the speed and the adaptability to survive. Yeah. Um, I think if it hadn't been for the um, conditions we had last year, it would have taken years for the players and for, you know, for the market to adapt. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. What are the partnerships that you need to create more to support your activity right now, Ines? Um, I would say that uh, we benefit every time that we are very close to uh, and we are around startups, new companies, uh, new entrepreneurs uh, in all areas of the business. So uh, these are the alliances uh, my team and I try to build every day you know, to know what is emerging, to know what is, even if it starts very small, yeah. um, that's likely the moment where you need, you know, to invest, to support and to stay tuned uh, with, with new th things. And the level of curiosity of L'Oreal people and employees is very, very high. But at the same time, uh, you know, if I think about those partnerships, I wouldn't exclude uh, the brick and mortar clients um, because they are unveil available. Um, as I said earlier, um, I, I think that we are all adapting our operations, our business models to ensure that we meet the constant changes of our consumers. And 
at L'Oreal, we believe in the O plus O world, online and offline. We do not believe that everything is going to go online. So um, it's the best of both worlds that need, to, you know, that we need to think about, strategize, and create partnerships that will allow us to serve better the, um, the consumers. <laughs> okay. May I ask you the famous question? How is the current situation treating your company? And in particular, perhaps what did you have to cope with? Look, I, I you know, any honest question, uh, answer will tell you that, you know, we were all affected. Uh, the, the, the scale of the impact was unprecedented uh, for all the industries. Uh, but it's also true that beauty shows a high degree of resilience. We've seen this in this crisis and we've seen this in previous uh, financial crises. Uh, worldwide, the data we have, and this is uh, public figures, our estimates show that uh, in 2020, the beauty market contracted by 8% and L'Oreal Group did uh, significantly better than the market at minus four. So um, we have extraordinary brands and a very diversified portfolio uh, in terms of brands, categories, geographies that helped us uh, balance out the different impacts um, in different regions of the world. So, you know, uh, having said that, uh, no one, uh, when, when 2019 ended, no one thought that 2020 or end 2021 would be what, what they were. So, how, what did we do? Because uh, that's that's probably um, most interesting. Interesting. Our guiding principle since day one uh, has always been the safety of our teams. Uh, we were one of the first companies to adapt and to introduce work from home policies. Uh, our communication plan, uh, uh, which was under the you know the the, the, the leadership of Kuning. Uh, uh, was very, very intensive to ensure the cohesion of our teams. We moved a lot, all our learning uh, to uh, digital under the motto, um, learning never stops. Uh, we paid special attention to the mental health of our teams um, and we completely revised our HR policies to ensure full flexibility, not just during the last three years, but for the future. Uh, as well. Um, in terms of business, I told you about, so e-commerce has completely shifted. Yeah. And we have been closer than ever, I would say, to our customers during these periods. Mm -hmm. As you know, because you're a French national, L'Oreal was born uh, with hairdressers. So, uh, and behind them, you know, there's an extensive network of micro enterprises, family uh, businesses that needed us more than ever. So, you know, we, we navigated this together but we, with a lot of uh, human touch, collective intelligence and, uh, and thinking about long term partnerships. Excellent. And what are your bigger plans right now, your objectives, ambitions? I'm sure you do. <laughs> Yes, yes. Look, um, it's what I share with you. We want to become the number one beauty tech company in Thailand, building a true offline and online leadership. That's what we want. And uh, that will take us uh, uh, some time to, to get there. Uh, but I would say that beyond that, um, we need to um, have a great, great HR dreams. Uh, because we need to recruit and retain a team of champions, uh, people that are um, coming to work every day with, you know, this, this sense of, uh, I, I, I want to give the best uh, of me uh, every day, but also teams that feel that they can deliver because they have the tools and they have the, en the enablers that allow us to explore their full potential. We are constantly revising the ways we work and, and we work very, very strongly uh, to build a culture of respect and inclusion to, everybody, to everyone in, in our teams. 
Sounds great. How can we reach out to you and your company in the easiest way right now? Is it with social medias, emails? Look, I, I think we are very well positioned in the digital space. Our digital cre credentials are quite high. So, you know, you can uh, reach out to us on Facebook uh, via Messenger. You can uh, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, we have a very, very strong presence in university. So, you know, if there is anyone who's a young graduate, uh, can always uh, come to our um, booth camp and um, and chat with us. And we have a very flexible leadership. So, you know, you can reach out to me on, on LinkedIn uh, personally, you know, on my personal LinkedIn account, and I will make sure that uh, we answer to you and, uh, you know, the message gets to the right person. On straightforward. <laughs> What has been the best moment in your life so far? Um, 2018 was a life changing year for me. Uh, I was a mother, you know, I, uh, my, my son was born, so I became mother for the first time. And later in that year, I arrived in Thailand. So I don't think I will have many years where two such foundational, you know, moments or, or, or yeah, uh, will happen again. You know, it was, uh, I don't know if you have children, but, you know, being a mother is something that is very, very important and, and uh, life-changing. And then, you know, this was the job of my dreams. I'm, we are super happy here. So um, it, it's likely a year not to forget. I'm also a mother, so I totally agree. <laughs> it is life changing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. What are you, according to you, the main traits of character of a solo woman like you? For me, if I read about you, I read the Prestige Online interview, you are a solo woman, a shining solo woman. What are the main traits of character, uh, Ines? First, let me assure you that I, I'm also very imperfect. Right. So I, I um, and likely my qualities are, you know, when taken to an extreme, probably also derailers. But uh, look, I, I, I would say that I, I have a handless energy. Um, I, I believe I, I've, I've lived my life believing that anything is possible. Always. Wow. Um, and I've shaped my leadership on authenticity and integrity. So I, I think that's probably what, what comes across in, in the conversations or, uh, but again, again, uh, uh, we can have a full interview on my flaws as well. So, um, <laughs> okay. Um, what are the main assets or skills uh, do you think are essentials to acquire in order to succeed, to achieve our objectives, uh, can be professionally, perhaps personally? It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, it's a very good question because I, I, uh, I, I think, you know, if I think back, the last 12 years of my career I have been in crisis mode managing crisis. So I was in uh, Spain uh, during the financial crisis of 2008 that lasted until 2019. I then moved to Portugal, who was just leaving the, 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 the a very big uh, and deep economic crisis. And now we have the sanitary crisis, right? And, and the, I think resilience to weather all these business cycles are, is very, very important in today's world because the world is not going to become simpler. Um, I think having very strong principles to hold fast in times of doubt, of self-doubt, it's, it's also very critical. Um, and, and a certain dose of confidence and agility to navigate this current ambiguity, uncertainty, and, and, and complexity. And I do 
worry a little bit because I, I, uh, I'm not sure we are educating the new generations on those principles. Um, I, 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 um, I worry that sometimes we want to facilitate too much. We want to make things uh, look very easy and, and very predictable. And life is not like that. Yeah. Uh, and certainly not uh, business. Yeah, exactly. Then maybe we can come to the next topic. What annoys you? What revolts you the most? Um, um, look, I, I, I don't quote well with selfish behaviors, uh, be it small or big, you know, uh, uh, be, you know, all the behaviors and everything we see regarding the planet, sustainability, what we're leaving for, you know, to the next generations, I, I find that unacceptable. And, and I, 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 of course, don't, don't deal well with human rights violations. Uh, I, I would say those are, you know, are very big topics um, that I, that I, you know, I like to believe that I, you know, I, I make things in my daily life to contribute for human and the societal uh, progress. Then, of course, you know, there are things that I, I don't like. I don't like people being late. <laughs> I don't like um, inefficient. In, in, is. Um, I certainly don't like lack of transparency. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. What makes you happy, uh, Ness? Many things. Many things. I'm a happy person. I um, I love the love of children and the innocence of children. And I, I it's a pity that we we lose that spontaneity as we grow up. Um, so that makes me happy. L make, building Lego makes me happy, as you can see on the background. I have many Lego. Um, winning makes me happy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, holidays and the sound of the ocean, because of course I was raised uh, uh, very close to the sea. That also makes me happy and brings me back to my childhood. Traveling makes me happy. Uh, makeup makes me happy, uh, especially because I don't do it very often. Now, there are many things, you know, being around people that I love. I um, I love life. I, um, I, I love also, life. I also read in your bio you are a fan of photography. Yes, but I, I you know, I like taking pictures, but like, I guess, all of us. Um, uh, I like the aesthetical, you know, the aesthetics of photography. I like portraits, um, but I, I'm not at all a professional, you know, I'm not. Um, it's, it's, it's a very uh, amateur kind of uh, taste or, or activity. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, how do you persevere? How do you keep your motivation high, I suppose, as a CEO, as a head? Uh, could you please share with us some tips? Mm -hmm. I think the question is, it's dual, right? So how do I persevere? Um, I, I, I believe in balance. Uh, I believe that a human being is, you know, a kind of triangle. You have the professional side of you, you have the family, part of you and you have yourself, right? You as a human being. So I do work a lot on this uh, triangle and trying to, to manage and find the right, the, the sweet spot. So I sleep at least 10 hours a day. I really need to, to, to sleep. Yoga entered my life two years ago and is very healing for me. I read, I study, I, um, I do a digital detox from time to time. Uh, I, I, I really find it very important. 
uh, and my weekends are dedicated to my inner circle. Uh, I don't work over the weekends uh, unless there is, you know, of course, an emergency or something. But as a principal, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I manage my time during the, during the week. And then what motivates me, um, it's really my teams. And, and I'm not saying that because, uh, you know, I want to be politically correct, but I, I, I always stay very close to the base of the organization. I love chatting with newcomers. I love being around young people. You know, they are my serum of youth. Uh, I, oh, I never lose an opportunity to, to go to universities and, and uh, stay close to students. I find it very refreshing. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it, um, it keeps me on my toes, but it always, it also keeps me young at heart. Uh, and, and I find these new generations to particularly curious. They tend to be, you know, to give a lot of attention to ethical issues, sustainability issues. So they have a broad range of interests. Yeah, I'm, for, I'm sure. <laughs> How do you organize your time? Oh, um, so Kuning doesn't let me lie, uh, for sure. You know, time for me is precious. I think it's precious to most of us. So I'm very, very careful with it. Uh, I am in control of my time and I don't let time or, you know, control me. Uh, so I make sure I spend less than 60% of my time in meetings. Uh, all of those meetings uh, have a purpose. They are action oriented. They are scheduled in advance in my calendar. And before the start of the new year, you know, I take time uh, to decide how much um, am I going to invest on strategic meetings, on HR topics, and really striking the right balance between internal and external uh, stakeholders. So, of course, you know, when, when you do it like this, it's it's very uh, or it might sound very rigid, but the other forty percent of my time is what allows me, you know, to speak to people like you and to welcome. And it's not it does not disturb my calendar, you know, it does not disturb my um, my performance because I, I I I tend to organize everything very carefully, which sometimes drives my teams crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is essential in life, um, Ines? A uh, very easy, yeah, that, uh, it's a very easy question. Uh, my family and health, that's essential. Okay, that's quite straightforward. <laughs> do you have a role model? Uh, who is your role model, your hero? Uh, who are the people who inspire you the most? Um... My father has had, uh, you know, is a huge reference in my life, without a doubt. Um, and then, uh, you know, I would say that the Obamas, the couple, uh, are also an inspiration for what they represent uh, and their contribution uh, to the world. So I, but I'm not a person, you know, that. Uh, Follow. I, I've never been a person that follows others, you know, blindly or that has this, uh, you know, big reference in big stars or I, 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 I'm not that kind of person. Okay, so your father is uh, the most important person who is inspiring you. Uh... Yes, but, but I do, you know, I, I'm not going to lie and, Kuning and the team knows that I'm a huge fan of Obama. I have all the books. I, I follow them on social media, but but it would be, you know, one of the few. May I ask you why? I find it really interesting. Look, because they've done history, you know, the they've done history uh, and they just by getting the nomination and then getting the election. And because I, I, I believe they 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 lived up to the expectations. They are. 
you know, and we might agree or not with certain policies, uh, but regardless of that, you know, especially in comparison with who came after, <laughs> it yeah. was, you know, it was flawless. It was scandal free. It was, you know, it was not polemic. They've shown a great example to the world. They've been compassionate. They are very clever. I think they brought a lot of hope not yeah. just with Americans, but to a lot of people, you know, outside America. Mm, I'm sure. Thank you so much for sharing that. Would you be so kind to share now an, an, an anecdote with us? Sorry for my French accent. No. <laughs> anecdote, something yeah. funny. Yes, look, I, I, uh, you're probably looking for something with humor, but I'm going to tell you. I, I, I'm not sure I have so many stories with, with humor, but I'm going to tell you uh, an anecdote of how I overcame fear. Uh, so you need to know I'm very, very scared, very afraid of heights. Heights, you know, I'm very, very yeah. scared. But I always make sure that I, you know, I, I there and I and I, I do everything I can to, to overcome that. So I jumped out of a plane in Cuba and I did paragliding in South Africa. And um, when I was in Cuba on the plane, I, I think I was more afraid of being in the plane than actually jumping. But once I was on the plane, which was, you know, a World War II kind of plane, um, I got cold feet. I really didn't want to jump. And the instructor pushed me out of the plane. So I came all the way down screaming, I'm going to kill him. I'm gonna kill him. But then, of course, I didn't, uh, and I and I was very thankful in the end because it's um, you know it's it, it was an amazing experience. I didn't repeat it uh, ever since. I did paragliding after, but uh, which is another experience. But uh, at least I did it. Yeah, great! Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> is there a person that changed your life? Who and why? person who changed my life? Um, a person who changed my life. Look on my professional, uh, on my professional life, I've had uh, very important men who believed in me uh, even more than I did. So uh, when we we always speak about um, women empowerment, uh, I always you know advocate that men need to be part of the solution, and that women don't just need mentorship. They don't need a mentor, you know. <laughs> Uh, or they might need it, but they especially need sponsors because by definition, sponsors are usually people in power yeah. that will, you know, speak highly of you in moments of great opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I've had the chance to be surrounded by bosses that had, you know, that played that role for me. So I would say they, they, they have been critical. I don't know one or two people, you know, it's probably a combination of um, four or five in the last 20 years. Are you also talking, Ines, about uh, women of color empowerment? Is that something you distinguish? Do you consider yourself as a color woman, by the way, or not? Uh, I don't think about it. No, uh, no, I could, I could be. I could be, yes, but I, it's not something that I, uh, that I, um, that I think about it uh, uh, in particular. I, I am, however, very conscious that uh, women, in the, the cause of women empowerment uh, needs to help more women of color. Okay. You know, because the starting point is not the same. Okay. Thank you so much for that. What do you think the world needs today? 
Oh, that's a big question. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, what the world needs today, the world needs, you know, the planet needs urgent intervention. And uh, this is why programs like L'Oreal for the Future are absolutely critical. Uh, and as a company, we set ourselves as well to help young people who have likely suffered a lot during the pandemic. So I think the world needs intervention in the planet. The world needs intervention with the young people. Um, and I, I, I think the world, it could come in hand, more tolerance, more dialogue. Yeah, everything is kind of linked together. Yes, absolutely. What is the best gift you can give or share? Um, it, I will come ba back to this women empowerment question because throughout my career, I became, you know, if you read my LinkedIn, if all the interviews, uh, uh, the I, partnerships, the, the things that I'm, you know, in the causes I'm involved, they are all somehow linked with, with this question. Um, and I do find that young people especially are very interested in this, in that side of my experience and in that side of my career. So sharing the highs and lows with full transparency, the self-doubt uh, that I've had throughout my, my career that I still have, and how in certain moments I was able to, to turn that self-doubt into self-confidence it's probably a good contribution. It's a very humble contribution, but it's something that, you know, comes from my heart. So it, it comes quite easy to me. Yeah, I, I can feel your authenticity is extremely touching and empowering. And yeah, that's effectively the best gift. <laughs> Thank you so much. So that is our last question for you, uh, Ines. Uh, do you have a motivational recommendation for reading or to listen if you have a book that you would recommend or, I don't know, a podcast or? Look, I maybe I, I, I would need some time. Maybe I can email you, uh, you know, because it's it's not. Uh, I, I. I love reading, so it's very difficult for me to choose, you know, uh, one one or two, but uh, there is a book I, I always mention in my interviews, which is Lean In, uh, which is uh, all about um, women empowerment and how, why, why women sometimes remove themselves from the table. And um, it's, it's very eye-opening. So I, I found it very, very helpful because it also shows that a lot is in our hands, right? A lot um, can be done uh, can be done by ourselves. Um, I do. Uh, there is a book that I, I read uh, a few years back on um, about a professor. So it's Tuesdays with. I need to come back to you with with the exact title. But it's the role of a teacher in the life of a student, and 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 I find that very interesting. And how older people, experienced people, uh, can have a great contribution. And because I've always been promoted very young in my life, that has been quite important. Um, important to me uh yeah yeah and then i there are certain ted talks that i that i love um but but i you know i'm gonna write them to you so that you have the the correct references thank you so much for sharing all your tips and your ambitions it has been uh, 
such a great moment to share and to spend with you. You are not only an incredible mother, you are also an incredible solar woman and inspirational leader. <laughs> You're so inspiring. I'm feeling boosted. <laughs> Thank you so much for your, your authenticity too. It is really a gift you're, you're sharing with others. So thank you so much for that.